Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Stand Still podcast. I am your host, Stand Still. Now, as always, before we get going, I want to take this time to thank the Most High for making this podcast, among many other wonderful things in my life, a reality. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, my guest today is a really good friend of mine. He's an incredible doctor, and he has a company called Dr. Mac Medicine. So he agreed to meet with me, and I want to hear all the things that he's doing with medicine and how he can give you guys tips to help you, yourselves out and whatnot. So without any further ado, I introduce to you Dr. Mac of Dr. Mac Medicine. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, Big Stan. It's How you doing, man? I, I am good. Thank you. This is Donna. awesome, man. Glad you're here, man. Many, so many years. That's right. Before we got to this, we go way back. We go way back. Oh, now, wait. oh wait, you walked in in oh wait. Yeah, oh wait. What are we? Twenty four. Twenty four. Sixteen yes. and sixteen and counting. Yes, and yes. counting. So, Doc, tell me, man, what exactly is Dr. Mac Medicine? And tell us, man, what do you do for the people, man? Tell us. What I do. I do what's called a concierge family practice. Okay. Uh, we don't take insurance because I think it gets in the way of healthcare. Okay. I keep this as affordable as possible. Most people say by the time you figure in the deductibles and the coinsurances, they're better off, more economical to come and see me. Right. I'm looking for an old school product. I'm looking for something where every patient has my phone number. I'm looking for someone where I can talk to someone on the way home, just as easy as see him in the office. And I also want to be able to get out of the lane, out of the box. I want to be able to start talking about preventative medicine. We do a lot of regenerative medicine, a lot of experimental and investigational stuff. I do a lot of HRT. I do a lot of hormone replacement therapy. I do a lot of uh, telemedicine, which over the next couple of months, we're going to be launching that over the tri-state area. Okay. Seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Nice. Okay. So in terms of what you do against other doctors. I'm not corporate. I'm not looking at a screen. I'm not getting paid by how many different metrics I can hit, whether it's good for you or not. I'm not going to force you on statins if you don't want to be on statins. If your blood pressure, if your cholesterol, if your numbers are good for you, but not necessarily for what the hospital is looking for, risk management, we're going to do what's best for you. I'm going to send you to the, to the cardiologist, to the orthopedist that's most appropriate for you based on our relationship, based on what you tell me and I know that you want, not who the hospital gets paid the most on and what contributes to, to, to my bonus. Oh, so I want you guys to be aware. It apparently, to me, apparently to me it sounds like... Um, Medicine is almost like commission based. That's how it sounds. Based I'll on break it down. Okay, well, break it down. So doc. you're going to sit there, you're a hospital employee. 40 cents of every dollar is guaranteed. What does that mean? That means of your salary, whether it's 200 grand, 300 grand, a million, no matter what type of specialist. 40 cents of every dollar, that's written to the contract. You get that. The next 90 cents, yeah. that's up to you. Okay. So what it means is, you're going to sit there, and you see that doc filling in that PDF, just typing, doesn't even look at you anymore. <laughs> so what's going on there is this. Hospital has between 120 and 180 metrics, things they're specifically measuring. Right. They want to make sure that allegedly indices of health care, but also tend to protect them from liability and make sure they can cover themselves in case anything happens. Okay, so and, let me just stop you right yeah. there. Let me just stop you right there. So, there's a checklist involved. Right. Right? Right. And the doctor that gives you, a care, gives you care in a traditional medical setting goes through these metrics or checklists. Right. Continue. So, what ends up happening is each one is assigned a value. Okay. A three, dollar value? Three quarters of a cent. Okay. One cent. Maybe a cent and a half. And what happens is... Every month, the computer's going to pull 10 charts. Randomly? Randomly. Okay. And on November 1st, you're going to get a little email from HR. Hey, why don't you schedule your appointment? And those 100 charts are going to be combined. And those 120 or 180 checklist things they're looking for? Sure. Well, if you got 
over 90% of those on every chart, you're going to get the full cent on that one. If you get 70 to 90%, you might only get half a cent. If you get less than 70, you're going to get nothing. Mm. And if you get less than 50, you owe them money. Really? So now they're going to total all those up, and you're either going to get a little bonus, or you're going to get an invoice for what they paid you above which you didn't earn because you weren't providing the quality of the care they're looking for. So you're in a hole. So they don't even have to whip you. You're going to do it yourself after you get those first couple of invoices. Oh, okay. And now you get people on statins they don't need. Now you get people on vaccines they might not need. Now you're going to make sure that everybody stays in-house. And you don't even have to bully this guy. You don't have to say anything. He'll do it himself. And that's where corporate medicine is. This is about ROI, return on investment for the hospital, okay. and liability for the hospital. If you get better or worse, God bless you. <laughs> but it ain't on them, man. Now, is the doctor in a hospital under contract? Of course they are. So if okay. you fail, if you don't want to do it anymore, that's great. But when you sign that contract, sure. 10, 15, 20 mile radius if you leave. The minute... The minute you go outside of about five to ten miles, yeah. especially in an area as densely populated as the boroughs, sure. you're starting to practice from scratch. And you think the next hospital is going to hire you if you failed at the one before so badly? Sure they will. They'll bring you on for less money. And oh, by the way, if you don't meet those metrics, well, the next contract, they're going to renegotiate that a little bit. And you owe us 70 grand, don't worry about it. We're only going to charge you a few points interest, and we'll build it into the next few years. Oh, so you're in a hole. So you're starting in a hole. You don't think these guys aren't going to be all over that computer? You don't need a damn thing. You are a cash or a revenue-generating unit, as they like to call it. <laughs> it's called an RVU. Every procedure has an RVU associated with it. That is proportionate to what the specialty can earn with that procedure at that diagnosis. That's awesome. I, I got a question. Now let's let's shift, let's go into the GYN portion of this, right? Why are so many black women misdiagnosed when they're pregnant? Why is that? Not being a GYN and not having a lot to do in that, I am leaning into conjecture on that. Okay. But what I will say, and wow, this is going to get me in trouble. Thank you, Stan. <laughs> um, I'm trying to pass my words, but I yeah, guess I, I, guess I shouldn't. Take your time. Because um, nobody's listening. And because the meat is moving through the, the factory so fast, it's so easy to get misdiagnosed. Mm. Uh, how's this? Let me put this in something I'm familiar with. Years at level one inner city emergency rooms. Okay. Why are so many patients, minorities or otherwise, get such seemingly shoddy care? Because when no one's paying a top bill, when you're not getting the four or five hundred percent markup for the same service that you get from a well-heeled insurance company, mm -hmm. and now you're bringing that doctor down to 2.8 visits per hour, and you're penalizing if they go above that, Mm -hmm. Once you get into the Jacoby ER, once you get into the downstate uh, uh, OBGYN or pediatric sure. ERs, yeah. 2.8 patients an hour? How about if it's under 10, it was a good day? So now you've got people flying through. Right. You've got guys doing 12-hour shifts. You've got languages of all kinds. You haven't even started talking about prejudice. You haven't even started talking about political agendas. You've got so many things stacked up against you. People refer to other people as me in the mm. ER. You're pushing it through. And honestly, Stan, it's not as bad as it sounds. Because if you sit there and try to say, I met 80 individuals today, and you start to agonize, you're going to become profoundly ineffective and slow to the point that you are not effective or useful at all. And what it starts to become is, if I start thinking about each individual, no, 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 because i got a job to do and people need to be seen. I did emergency medicine for many, many years and almost exclusively overnight. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
If I walked out of that ER at 7 or 8 in the morning and there were people in that waiting room, I was embarrassed. I let my staff down because the guys who come in have the right to as many empty beds as possible so they don't take it in the teeth. So they're not signing in to 15 active patients. Mm. So move it. Get it through. Get it out. Mm. That's what happens. Assembly line. When it's an assembly line. Yeah. And you're in a volume-based business. You haven't even talked about the EDP that comes in okay, who's punching on. and biting. You haven't even what's, talked... What's EDP? I'm sorry, extremely dangerous person. Oh, extremely You haven't dangerous. even talked okay. about somebody who NYPD brings in. You haven't even talked about somebody who's just angry and just jumps up in your face. Or who's just combative and stuff. Or verbally abusive. You haven't even talked about the guy who comes in and how that sets off the whole staff. How many nights do you sit there and pool money among people who might have some and try to get food at 2 a.m. because somebody comes in, handcuffed to a bed, drunk as hell, laughing at the world, who killed somebody? Mm. How do you think that affects the 25-odd people who need to care for 150-odd people, some of which are critically ill and show it with a knife in their eye, some of which are critically ill and don't, and you better find them before they get sick? Mm. So I, as a, as, a, as a white male in medicine, sure. I've, it's the, the racial inequalities, the sexual inequalities, those are shoved in your face all the time. And... When I talk to other residents and other doctors and I see staff members, I think it's something you have to individually, personally hold yourself accountable to because I sit there going, wow, there's so many real issues that before someone can eat, it's like this, you know, uh, cops arrest so many of this. I'm sitting there going, can they really see the car that guy driving by in that car at 90 miles an hour? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not for nothing. You're blue or you're not. They don't give a damn what color you are, in my experience. I sit there going, when you say disparities, there are disparities. There's no doubt about it. But boy, I think there's so many issues that are going to preempt those, fair or not, that I don't know that when you start doing controlled studies and sociological studies, when I've read these things, yeah. they're politically motivated. Okay, so, all right, so... If, if if medicine is a business, right, and we understand that people have to make money and we get that part, how do you change the model that's currently in place? Now, is this model everywhere or just in the tri-state area? This is everywhere. So how do you how do you change it? I would say you can't. Really? Because the forces involved are too strong. Wow. Who, 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 who are the forces? So the last time you went to the supermarket. Okay. About a week ago. How many boxes did you check for high fructose corn syrup? Oh. How gotcha. many boxes did you check for mono and diglycerides mm -hmm. or sodium nitrate? Mm -hmm. Why is that in our food, but it's not in Europe's food? Mm. Why is it that Coke and Pepsi are in the new food chain? Because inner city youth get 30% of their sugar, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. from garbage calories like that. So it's a discrimination against them if you take it out of their diet. Stan, mm. that's fraud. That's Coke and Pepsi mm -hmm. running the FDA. They can, hold on. Getting hold on, kids stop. sick from stop, day one. Stop, hold up. Stop. 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 Hold up. Hold on. Are you you hold can't on, tell me you're going to turn on, around hold health. Hold you can't tell me you're going to turn on, around health care when part of health care, when part of your government is making people sick. Hold on. You just said, let, let's go back. We're going to get to that. You In just, 2030, you said, you're going to own nothing and be happy. And there'll only be 500 million people in the world. Stan, where 13 out of 14 people go? They're killing our kids, and it's okay, and it's legal. Okay, okay, hold on. How are Coke and Pepsi running the FDA? How, how do they do this? When you go to the gas station, you go into the attendant, you give him a high five, you talk about ball back in the day, he just gives you, ca he just gives you gas, right? Sure. He don't need money, right? Huh? He don't need money, right? 
I mean, I'm there for a service. I'm to get my gas. He need. He, does he ask you for money? No. No. You get gas for free? I want oh, to go no. to your place. No, no, no. Your place. Oh, when I go Stan, to it's the about the dollar stand. Oh, the money. That's it's what you're trying money, to illustrate. It's the money, man. Okay. Okay. You sit there. It takes a billion dollars to bring a drug to market. Yeah. How much of that goes to research? Well, the FDA needs money to adequately supervise the population and make sure the study is safe. It's about 40 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. The extra 60 cents goes to the research institutions, which take an average of 76 to 82 cents on the dollar. You realize that only leaves about 10 cents, right? So this money, yeah. this money is getting shaken down by the FDA to get paid. You want to get something out there? You're going to pay for it. You can't pay for it, it don't make it out there. You're talking about Kellogg's. What, what was it, Kellogg? Who, um, someone was talking about the high cost of food, and he said, let them eat cereal for dinner. That's <laughs> one step away from let them eat cake. Right. But he ain't going to get Ma his head cut off. Marie Antoinette, did she say that? Who was that? <laughs> she did. Marie she Antoinette, did. let them eat cake. My yes. point is, that's a C. <laughs> so wait a her. minute. You sit there. You take an ingredients list in our country. It's 28 items longer than an ingredients list anywhere else in the world. On our food products. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. Artificial sweeteners are banned all over the world that are legal here. Food coloring banned all over the world that are legal here. We do nothing with herbs. Botany is completely out of the med school curriculum. What's the botany? Yeah, plants. We do, we do plants. nothing with home, home remedies. We do nothing with culture. They're laughed at. You're going to take a big pharma drug. You're going to do a big pharma procedure. Or you get nothing. And you're going to pay through the nose for it. And if you're, the, if, you, if you're someone who's got private insurance, sure, you're going to pay four or five times what's something with Medicare or Medicaid is going to pay for it. Wow. Because you're paying for them. Montefiorian United yeah. had a little squabble okay. a year or two ago. And Montefiore said, we're not going to take United. Do you know what that was all about? Mm -mm. What that was all about was they had to renegotiate a contract. So they agreed with Monty, day one, Medicare and Medicaid, we'll pay you 125% of the fee schedule. So if Medicare says an x-ray should be 40 bucks, they'll pay 50. Okay, let me just stop you right there. Sure. Just for, for the listeners, for the viewers, what's the difference between Medicaid and Medicare? Medicare mm -hmm. is a something that someone pays into. Okay. And it's something that it's an insurance policy from the Fed for the elderly and the, and the disabled. Okay. Medicare is Medicaid. You mean? Med, that's that's Medicare. Oh, Medicaid yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Medicaid is subsidized insurance for for indigent populations. Gotcha. Okay. So what happens is, though Monty and United agreed right away. Hey, 125 percent of the fee schedule. That's great. So that gives Monty a little bit of a bump. United want to end this quick. They went, we'll pay you 385% of the fee schedule for all our insured patients. Mm. So you get health insurance? Sure. Right. So if a Medicaid or a Medicare patient comes in and it's $100, you know, you're getting paid, they're charging you 385 mm. How fair is that? I didn't even know that. So Monty said, no, we want 500%. So mm. over a nine-month negotiation, I think Monty came down to mm -hmm. 498%. Mm. And United said, we can't do that. And after nine months, United went, okay. And they caved and they paid 490%. Mm. So this is not a level playing field. Mm. This is about the almighty dollar. This is about shaking down the insured patients to pay for the uninsured patients. If 99 point plus percent of a hospital's patients are on government insurance, then why aren't they G3, G4, G5 government employed? Why are they getting, why are they unions? Why are they getting six, seven figure salaries? Mm hmm Because this is collusion mm -hmm. to make money Understood. on healthcare. Mm. So when you say, gee, what can we do about this? I would say the best thing a patient can do is never get there. I mean, what? Don't go to the doctor. 
which means get healthy, which means stop learning what you eat and stop drinking. Oh. Stop the substance. Change the life. We don't teach lifestyle in school. Sure. We don't teach a damn thing right now sure, in school. Sure, sure. We don't teach you. Yeah. We don't teach the three R's, let alone rules of financial independence. Mm-hmm. We don't teach diet and nutrition. Mm-hmm. We don't teach exercise. I went to four years of medical school, one year internship, three years of residency. I have still not received one class on exercise or nutrition. Mm. Not one. Mm. So how do we, this system, the deep state is using this to keep the poor people sick and down and to suck money out of the tax rolls of the governments by pulling it from Medicare and Medicaid and then using it to crush the middle class in collusion with the government Mm -hmm. by jacking health care costs to 500% of what it would be for cater care. So when you say, well, how, how do I bring these costs down, Doc? How do I get higher quality? Well, the minute you're going to sit there and say you're going to have an ER with X number of providers mm-hmm. seeing Y number of patients, that's 6 to 1, 8 to 1, 10 to 1 per hour? Mm-hmm. How's that win? Mm. We graduate how many doctors, nurses, well, let's keep it to providers. Doctors, nurse practitioners, and physician's assistants. We generate a fixed number a year per, per year. Linear. We keep adding that pop number onto the population of doctors, nurse practitioners, and physicians. How's the population growing? Is it growing linear or is it growing exponentially? Exponentially. So is this is doomed to fail already. Yeah, exponentially. This is sure. just going to get worse in the cities. And who's that going to fall on? minorities and who's it going to fall on the hardest minority women wow everything falls harder on the minorities everything falls harder on the poor whether you're lily white dirt poor in the Appalachians or something else in Brooklyn sure and of course the women always take the biggest hit always wow all right so moving straight ahead doc (laughs) this is this is awesome man this is awesome so we're in the Olympics and yes. the Olympics are going on. Um, why isn't there better sanctioning when it comes to um, the combat sports like boxing? As we just saw, um, we had an Italian fighter drop out of a fight because she wasn't comfortable against her opponent. Why can't we tighten that up? And, um, and I want to relate this, it to this is a personal opinion. I, this is just how I feel about it. And, and I want to relate it to too. I want to talk about the NFL. I want to talk about the WNBA. I want to talk about the NHL. Um, I want to talk about the NFL. Give the my NBA. personal, uneducated opinions on all those. I love yeah, it. I want. I want to talk about you know the way sports is as it relates do, to medicine. Do your podcast watchers know your personal history? Uh, some of them know. Some of them. Your professional boxer, how long ago? Uh, I last fought in 01, 2001. Last Who time was the international body at that time? When you okay, when you fight in New York, the New York State Athletic Commission, right, oversees. But who was the international body? Oh, I don't know. I don't know who runs the IBA. But it was the IBA. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. So the IBA has been doing Olympic boxing for how many decades? God knows. Right. And the IBA, about three years ago, started doing, they got away from polygraphs, they went to hormone analysis. Okay. And they started saying, well, why would one person's hormones do so much? Then they went to genetic analysis. Okay. And they have still yet to say what the test was, and they won't. But they decided that if you were XY, you cannot compete against XX. Simple as that. Right, because XY is male. Right. And the Olympics has a very progressive the cr- agenda. The chromosomes we're talking about. The chromosomes. the chromosomes. The Olympics has a very progressive agenda. Right. And um, they decided that mm, we're not going to buy that. So they dropped the. They they said they all of a sudden there were financial issues. There was transparency issues. They thought the tests were arbitrary, and they dropped it. Okay. So now the Olympics just said, well, whatever it says on your passport is good enough. For for us. Mm. So 
you want to get XX against XX and XXY against XY, then the Olympics needs to go let the IBA do their thing again. If they want to have a progressive agenda and say it doesn't matter, however you want to either identify, because, no, these people aren't trans, but they were assigned a gender at birth, and they were raised from birth as female. But this is a combat sport, and they're physiologically not female. These are the facts. So it's a man fighting I, I, a woman. I appreciate if you disagree, but I don't. So this is my personal opinion. I think you're hurting people. I think you're putting people at risk. This is an XY athlete. Yes, they lost fights. Um, you know, it, it, again, I'm not judging them as a fighter. Sure. I'm just saying, if you're going to say, how do I feel about that? I think the, the IOC did what they did to push their political agenda. It's always been a very political organization. This year is obviously no different. Well, off the top of your head, in all, in all the sports, what percentage of athletes do you think are on steroids? At the college level, that could be as high as 30 or 40 percent. At the professional level, it's as high as 85 to 90 percent. We got team physicians. We have testing. The testing's a joke. All testing. How so? If you're a professional athlete and you fail a test, you're cheap or you're uninformed. Okay. So, how, how, so when how, you look at. Steroids. Let's 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 pick a sport. Let's pick when you look at the, the NFL. All right, we're talking about the NFL football, and you say steroid American football, steroid testing. Okay, and that goes for NCAA, NFL, IOC, anybody you want. Okay, and you say we test for 180 substances. Okay, that's fantastic. But let's go back to how the whole thing started when they were allegedly going to crack down on it, which is a fig leaf for the real abuse. And they caught a couple of the Raiders using the clear and Barry Bonds, that, that whole thing. So what was the clear? Was it a controlled substance? No one knew what it was. It was a designer steroid. Okay. So if you're going to take a five carbon ring steroid with 27 up to 32 carbons. Okay. Each of which has at least one, if not two or three sites that you can add something to it to make it unique. You've got roughly 169,000 different combinations of drug that you can make. Now you're going to turn around and say, well, wait a minute, how many of those could have biological activity? Well, a lot, but let's just be conservative. Let's just say 1%. You have 16,900 possible different chemical structures of biologically active, unique anabolic steroids. Okay, so... So what you do is... Continue. You take some testosterone, cypionate, or enanthate, or decadurabin, or methyl testosterone, a regular run-of-the-mill. You go for the, down into Brooklyn, find an organic chemist on Howard Beach. Sure. And they'll make eight or ten different samples, and they'll change them in eight or ten different ways that only they know. Then they'll give it back to you. You like it? Did it work? I'll make more. You really liked it? Great. Now they're going to sell that for, to someone for fifty to $100,000 a year. Because when you turn around and you take your testosterone, sure, and you get your blood tested, we only know about 180 of them, of 16,900, uh -huh. at least, probably a whole hell of a lot more than that. So what did they do with the clear? The clear, they had it. Yeah. They took it. They analyzed it. Two years and about $1.4 million later, they identified what it was. They went the whole Oakland Raider team was taking it. Mm. So if you can afford it, you can be the test. Simple as that. Okay. It's a designer steroid. Now, I get that part. What are the side effects? Side effects are the list of side effects are miles long. Every single system 
from psychiatric through cardiac through pulmonary through renal, every single system from head to toe is impacted over time so what what the doctor's talking about he's talking about the 10 body systems that you have your nervous system your endocrine system so when he says systems that's what he's talking about Con continue so you sit there and listen I personally think there was a conscious decision made yeah. in the NFL a while ago in a lot of these leagues. Let's pick one thing, become the vanguard of that, concussions or like for football, drug-free for baseball, and let's show how serious we are. The media will embrace that. Mm -hmm. It'll hide the most immediate glaring problem in our sport and maybe make it more palatable for mainstream America. Mm -hmm. And then we can pat ourselves in the back. So you're sitting there, and we're supposed to believe that all these concussions in football, but what about all the other guys who went on to have perfectly normal lives and all the other guys who had jobs and families and never had problems and played just as much? We're kind of not controlling for the substance abuse and all the, all, all the, all the steroids and the lifestyle. So we're sitting there, we're supposed to believe that you've got a guy starting a Super Bowl at six foot four, 268 pounds, about seven or eight percent body fat at 44 years old. <laughs> God don't roll that off the assembly line, Stan. <laughs> And then when he go on, I ain't gonna sit, please. And then when he goes on to have problems, we're supposed to forget all the domestic violence and all the alcohol problems. <laughs> I'm supposed to sit there and watch a guy for years headbutt the goalposts, headbutt his teammates, headbutt the wall. I'm supposed to <laughs> not notice when I'm bouncing in clubs in New York City that he's vomiting on himself in clubs the night before games from alcohol intox. And I'm supposed to feel bad for his concussions. I'm supposed to feel bad for concussions of a guy who once had to take a year off for cocaine abuse and rehab while he played for what was sometimes jokingly called South America's team. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all concussions. No, that's a steroid problem. That's a controlled substance problem mm. that we decided we were going to do a fig leaf on and call it, and we'll... Come on. So wait a minute. Baseball goes through this hideous money grab. Okay, how so? How so? 95. They went on a strike because the owners weren't making enough and neither were the players. Okay. They didn't even have a World Series. Mm -hmm. They get it together for the following year. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, two guys have a legitimate chance at breaking the home run record. Sosa and uh, Maguire. And boy... I was amazed. I think those guys deserve whatever you can possibly give them for not getting baited into making that a race ride. Because, mm -hmm. boy, the media tried. But they couldn't. They kept it clean. They were smart. They respected each other. They respected the game. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, here comes a roll call of players just breaking records right and left. Any random guy in the gym knew what the hell was going on. Now baseball's recovered. The 96 Yankees, all of a sudden it's America's game three or four years later, and now these owners are going, we got to pay these guys now. Mm -hmm. So we take a senator who owns 1% of a major league baseball team, and after he retires, put him in charge of investigating these players and cleaning up baseball. Funny how many of them were guilty, but you never really proved it. They were dumb enough to say it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was funny. I remember hey, we, we. I remember I was working on a weekend. Place was empty. I'm doing work, and I'm watching. It wasn't a weekend. It was a Friday. It was a holiday Friday. I think it was. I forget why, but no one else was in the practice that day. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching Roger Clemens in his hearing. Okay. And he's saying no. And some guy trying to escape federal time who was allegedly injecting with steroids and then hiding the needles in a Coke can to take out later to use in case he ever... Um, he was saying, oh, no, I did this. And they couldn't find evidence and they couldn't make the case stick. 
And the Fed actually lost that case. And of course, Roger Clemens' career was ruined. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this commercial comes on in between for Dunkin' Donuts. And it's this kind of Broadway thing. I'm better than I used to be. I'm faster than I... And it's this assembly line of this guy drinking his Dunkin' coffee and just rocking the world. So that substance is okay because a big multinational is making, making uh, money off it. That substance is not because a couple of big multinationals have to pay massive contracts to A-Rod and don't want to pay it anymore. So now you're going to go get skewered in Congress and you're doing a cute Broadway hymn. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I, I I sit there, I have a, I mean, I didn't begin, I never did anything until Me neither. I was 42 and my testosterone was down to 31 and I was 312 pounds. So I did some. I, I be in HRT, I've been on HRT t ever since. But I played against a lot of guys who did and I was lifted in gyms with guys who did it. I lived with it. I watched it evolve over the years. And I'm certainly not making ex excuses for it. It's something you want to do. Now, I have a professional bodybuilder. She competes drug-free. WNBF. Urine. Polygraph. Ten years. That's it. There's other leagues that do nothing. And you know what? I love watching them, too. It's a different sport. I really could care less. That's a personal choice. When you want to compete against me with that, well, now that's a different animal. Mm -hmm. But to each his own, and that's where people get involved with trying to stop it. My point is... You're sitting there, and I know as a physician, in the ERs, in the hospitals, someone comes in with an opiate problem. Someone comes in with co co cocaine. I, doc, I, I just blew the college fund on crystal meth. You get a hug. You're a victim. Meanwhile, some guy did a, 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 two years of anabolic steroids trying to make the big time. Some guy did it to keep a college scholarship. Some guy did it just because he liked it in the gym. And you're a criminal and have to be thrown out. Mm. So it's funny, you talk about, you know, we talked about earlier about demographics getting cheated. The demographics within demographics getting cheated. You want to talk about why is, how do we improve medicine? Well, Who's making money off all that booze and off all that nicotine and off all that ca caffeine? Who's making money off those guys on all that, all the steroids and the GH? Who's making money? No one's I mean, stopping that. And if you play against these guys, you realize very quickly, I'm going to do that or I'm going to go home. So you can't even compete. A regular guy being his normal self. You can compete. Not going to compete well. You're not going to get to the next level. And it's not even a, he's poor, he needs to do it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a country boy. And I'd go into Boston. I loved playing the city kids. Nose to nose. It had nothing to do with color. It was who had it, who was at the schools that had the scouts, and who didn't. And the thing is, when all of a sudden someone injects steroids into the equation, oh, you know what? It ain't even a question of, I won't go to college any other way. No, I want to be better. I'm a kid. I want to be better now. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm on family number two. I'm 45 and I'm lonely. I need an erection now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's not about that. It's not about that. But there's, when you talk about healthcare as a community service, taking care of everybody over every strata and over diagnosis and over you got too many people are making money where people are sick whether it's food whether it's what we're feeding kids whether it's whether it's a legal drug and what's okay or an illegal drug and not mm. now dr. Mack every single guest that I have on I ask these four questions to okay. end out the sequence. So here we go. Number one, what do you need in your life to be happy? Security and loyalty. Okay. I need my wife. That's awesome, yeah. And I need 
something to go home to that I I believe in. Awesome. Would you help someone who did you wrong? Um, what's the setting? Would I help them? As no, 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 no. All right, let me give it to you like this. Am I Macaulay Sullivan, MD, New York State, 203477? You the doc, yes. You your doctor, your doctor Mac. They got me one hundred percent, top to bottom. Okay, I've, I've been but, in that situation in but, ERs. But I'm curious, if you weren't Doctor Mac, would you help somebody that did you wrong? So if I go back uh, uh, to the bouncing days, sure. And I'm watching somebody about to take a beating, mm -hmm. and he's done me wrong. Am I going to jump in? Hell no. You screwed me. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a human being. Okay. And if you hurt somebody who I c c c care about, look out. Awesome. If you present to me as a patient, I took an oath. Now, that's hypocritical. That's, a, that's a g g g garbage. What I do has meaning. What I do means something to me, how I do it. I've taken care of people who have done terrible, terrible things. I've been involved in bizarre multi-shootings, Patients who killed people that day, who there were people in the hospital who would, very, would have been very happy to... No, I, I, I've taken care of some bad people. And I pride myself that I did a really, really good... I've taken care of people who mean to me for no apparent reason. I've taken care of people who I knew were, weren't good. Mm. No, that's when you've got to say, wait a minute, I'm not... Ma I am a physician. They have the, the, the right to think that when they come in, they're going to get my best. But you're talking some teacher who I think did my kids wrong? Someone who, who, who you know, in the gym giving problems to my wife or in the neighborhood? Oh, that's a different animal, Stan. Understood. Understood. What's your biggest achievement thus far? Um, prior, seven years ago, I would have said somehow ending up with an MD. Right now, it's my family, my wife and my kids. Awesome. Awesome. That's it. Awesome. So lucky. What's your biggest regret thus far? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I thought about this one a lot. I don't think I have one. Nice. There's an asterisk. I don't have a big one. Okay. It wasn't, you know, that bank I held up, I should have wore a mask. <laughs> it, well, I, I, I can't say that. Um, what I can say is the deferred returns. I can look back at from playing ball and then competing powerlifting and then grad school and med school and residency. And a lot of things went by the boards that I chose to let go because of a greater good or, you know, staying shop for the next. And I don't, I, 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 I maybe I'd make the same decision if I was there again. But I missed out on a lot of life experiences I w wish I hadn't, and a lot of chances to grow. I didn't leave the country the first time until uh, uh, two years after 9 11. Mm. Um, I should have, and I had a lot of chances to. I would have I, I understood a lot more. Um, we would have understood a lot more about a lot of different cultures. I think if I had done, I can think back to a lot of little things that if I had been maybe hadn't been so focused and so goal oriented because I, I thought I had to be because I just I wasn't the brightest bulb in the shoe and the I think I would have been a better person nice now before you go man tell the people where they can find Dr. Mac Medicine you can find me at IG at Dr. Mac Medicine you can find me at www.drmacmedicine.com and I'm happy to, 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 to talk to anybody Stand a man. Good to see you, Love man. you, brother. Thank you, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. That's all we got for right now. Thank you for tuning in. And we see you, we'll see you guys next time. All the best.